there's a few different factors. Performance for us with breeds, what we've done is, <laughs> you got a real good friend there. Um, we seek feedback from end users, and we're very blessed to be able to work with some great butcher shops, and they can give us direct feedback on carcass quality, on everything from fat ratios, just what we're doing and what they are receiving as the end product. So that gives us a lot of influence on our decision making for the breeds that we'll select, the genetics within that breed. Because, you know, a Berkshire pig is not just a Berkshire pig. There's a lot of different genetics in that, and that goes for any of the breeds. And honestly, we have used the breeds that we have because we've been successful with them. And when, I, when we talk breeds with other farmers, that's not something... I can tell you what I've been successful with. I can't tell you what you're going to be successful with. Your operation is going to depend on the decisions that you make and your end goals and how you choose to get there. I can tell you what we've not been successful with and what we have been and reflect on those decisions that we've made and figure out if that'll work for your operation and what breeds to select and what you know feed to offer your pigs and how to do that. And a lot of stuff that we've learned, man, it's easy to... to to walk in and be like, man, this is great. This is so awesome. I can look at it just like I have from years past and say, man, this is way better than it was. But by no means would I ever want somebody to think, you know, that, and we've, you've got, we started off on day one with selecting breeds and selecting genetics and getting. <laughs> yeah. You uh, want to stretch yourself out. Go do that. Yeah. We're, we're doing, we've got several different rations that we feed now. And when we started with pigs, we found pigs. On Craigslist, we bought the pigs. We went to southern states after that and said, what do we need to feed these guys? And we went from there. And huge learning curve. Life's a three-legged stool. If you want to be successful with anything, training, education, and experience. And there's only one way to get that experience, and that's just by doing it or by learning from others that have done it in the past. And there's a reason we have two ears and one mouth. Listen to them. So, yeah, just measuring those metrics is it's a little bit different with – each different pork enterprise. So a lot of it, again, is with weight gain and how we're doing with that. But with farrowing, how many piglets is she giving us per parity? There's a lot of different things. We're not as specific with breed. There's certain ones that we choose that choose not to use just because we're not sure that they would work well for our operation. And the feedback, again, that we get from those consumers that handle the product directly. We're more selective of their performance as opposed to the breed. And especially with our sows, we farrow on pasture. And so having a sow that is going to be, she's calm enough and docile that we can go and we can handle the piglets if anything happens and we can work with them but they may be out in the middle of the woods away from everything and responsible for protecting that litter. There's no crates. There's nothing. The mother is responsible for being considerate and being aware of her piglets being there too. So that's more of what we're selected for as opposed to uh, just any specific breed or anything within the breed. So, See y'all, this is why I came to his farm <laughs> because he knows what he's talking about. And uh, I remember the first time I came to his farm and I was like, Good guy. Came back a second time a, a couple of weeks ago, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, I asked him some hard questions, like technical pig questions. This man answered them <laughs> flawlessly. Asked him about estrus, asked him about gestation, asked him about what type of feed, asked him a whole lot of questions. And he he proved himself to be a very knowledgeable <laughs> pig farmer, which I love to hear. Because there are a lot of pig farmers who, especially those who are starting out, who just BS yeah. things and just say things and they're like i'm not sure or this is what i saw on youtube from some famous guy or whatever and uh, i've seen how that can be problematic for a lot of people who are wanting to get into raising pigs this is part of why i created pork rind tv was so that way we can have experienced farmers <laughs> um be able to share their stories their context and for people to be able to glean information i don't believe that aaron is that you are the god of pig farmers, right? Like, I don't believe anybody is. Not. 
But I believe that your experiences are important and that your experience can give someone insight into their operation currently or their future operation. And so I like giving people options in that. And so you're one amazing option for people who can glean and pick. All right, so I don't have to worry about breed. A lot of people think breed's important. And not that there isn't an importance to breed, but when you talk about my end goal is not really the breed. We're not here to do breed conservation here. We're here to produce a particular product of pork, quality of pork, that works for your market. And so I like the fact that you're focusing on the end goal, which is not necessarily the breed, which is a not a trivial issue, but more so a secondary issue compared to what are your end goals? And can your selection of the breed or even type of pig be able to meet those goals and your production needs? There's more to learn every day. That's the one thing that you got to realize is there's so much more to learn today and tomorrow than there was yesterday. Uh, the minute that you think you have it figured out that, yeah, that's keep learning. <laughs>